Hi everybody, it is April and I am in my craft room and I am here with part two or episode two of Let's Make a Quilt with our Cricut Maker. So I've introduced you to the material that I'm going to be using and now I've gotten to the point where I want to cut the material so that I can put it on my mat. So I've got these instructions here. These are to actually put the quilt together. These are the instructions that I need in order to cut my material to fit my mat. Now when I purchased my material, I didn't purchase it in the exact size. I just went through and said, okay, I want six fabrics with a print and then uh, I had some white fabric already. So I'm going to cut all of these into 12 inch strips so that I can place them on my fabric mat. This is my fabric mat. So the reason we cut them into 12 inch strips is because you only have 12 inches across. And even if your fabric, your fabric usually runs between 40 and 44 inches, you can just let the fabric hang off the end. We'll get to that in a minute. So right now, we need to get my fabric cut. What I've done is I've put stickies on my fabric so that I know which number it is. Now, what it's gonna look like when it's done, I have no idea, but this is the first time that I'm making it. So I always consider the first time to be kind of a, an experiment that way. All right, so let's get cutting. So what you will need to cut your fabric is fabric, a rotary cutter or scissors, your, your cutting tool of choice. And then I'm going to use my mat that I have on my table to do my measurement. So I don't care about from here to here. I care about from here to here. So I'm going to line up the fold of my fabric on the one inch mark of my mat so that I can see the line from here to here. If I pull it all the way down to my first line, I sometimes have trouble finding where the six actually starts. Or, yeah. So I'm going to be cutting it into 12 and then I'm going to line it up on the other side. This doesn't have to be exact because your Cricut is going to cut it perfectly for you. Alright, so that is, so you measure twice, cut once, 12. I've lined it up here, I've lined it up here, I'm holding my ruler, I'm putting my little pinky on the edge of my ruler to hold it steady, and I cut 12 inches. Now, this is just a little over here, but I want it to stick on my mat, so I'm going to go ahead and trim off that little excess. And because this is on the fold, I'm going to turn it around and cut it on the other edge, just because, mainly because I can. <laughs> Again, it's, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're not cutting the material to sew together. You're cutting the material so that your Cricut can cut it perfectly. Alright, line it up on the 12, 12, pinky on the edge. And there I got rid of my little crease. Okay, so I'm going to continue this on the rest. Now what I'm going to do while I'm doing this is I'm going to see fabric seven, fabric seven into 12 inch. So I should have two of fabric seven. Some of these I'm only going to have one because I'm only going to use a third of a yard. So I'll check that while I'm doing the rest. Okay, got them done. So I have all of my fabric cut. I've got it all labeled. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so now we take our fabric mat, pull the protective cover off. All right, it, 
doesn't feel really sticky, but we'll try it. I have another one in case I, this one doesn't have enough stick. So what you do is you lay your fabric face up on your mat. Now, I didn't cut off my selvages. Uh, you know what? I should probably do that. Hold on. That is just going to make it a little cleaner. So when you go to cut your fabric, unlike me, go ahead and cut your selvage off while you're doing that cutting. So then what you're going to do, and you're, you can alternate. So you're going to take your clean edge and you're going to line it up on your mat just like you would paper. And then make sure the edge of your fabric goes down the line. And like I said, you're going to have fabric hanging off the end and that's fine. Now, I have a brayer. Uh, Cricut has a brayer that's specifically for fabric and the mat and all that. I just had a brayer from previous projects. So I use it, I, unless your brayer has stuff on it that is going to cause you to get paint or something on your fabric, I don't see any reason why you can't use your brayer that you already have. So now I want to smooth out my fabric. And you can do that with a brayer. And with a brayer, you're going to get a good stick to It's almost like ironing without me. Hopefully your fabric brayer isn't as noisy as mine. Okay. So, I've got my fabric on my mat. Ready to go. Alright, so I've plugged my Cricut in. I've got it turned on. And I just thought, you know what? I need to make sure that I've got my rotary blade in my machine, and I don't. So, I'm taking out my blade, and I'm going to install my rotary blade. All right, here we go. Okay, so we've got everything ready to go. We've got our material cut, we've got our mats ready, We've got our machine on, so I'm going to go into the software. You just sign in, which is fine. All right, so I'm going to sign in. Okay, I usually use Google Chrome, so it's almost like it doesn't recognize me. Okay, I want to do a new project. I want to go to projects. I'm going to type in quilt. Okay, pick this one. This is the one I want. And make it. It is loading up everything. And it looks like, let's see, is everything there? Yep. All right, so we're going to go to continue. All right. It's got my machine. It's going to ask me what material I want to use. And I'm going to say medium fabric. I have loaded my rotary blade. And the machine is asking me for my first mat. Then I'm going to press my little cricket button 
because it says it is ready. So, while that maker is doing the cutting, I am pulling my pieces off my mat. So I've got this leftover fabric that I will keep. And then I just pull the pieces off. The beauty, one of the many beauties of this machine, is that it cuts your dog ears for you. So where you would normally have to trim these, it does it for you. I mean, how awesome is that? So my least favorite part of quilt making is cutting. And this guy eliminates my need to cut. So I'll take all of these pieces off and pick all the little dog ears off my mat. And then I'll load the next fabric. And my maker's faster than me. So after you have done the first three mats with your white, you're going to use the leftover white fabric for the next mat. So don't get rid of that fabric. Right, so I'm going to put this on here. And I'm having a little issue with my dog here. So I might need to get a new rotary blade. I've used this rotary blade to cut out fabric before. So, and I'm not aware that you can sharpen it, sharpen it. So I'm gonna see how it does on this next mat. And if it's still not cutting real well, I'm going to get me a new rotary blade. Okay, so I used my longest piece for mat four. And then mat five, I used the second longest piece that I had left over. And then this is the shortest piece that I have left. Look at that. So little waste. All right, let's see how it did cutting this. Oh, beautiful. I don't know what happened with the last one. But looks like my rotary blade issue is not an issue. And try to rotate back and forth where it starts because your blade doesn't cut all the way down every time. So you're gonna have a whole lot of wear on the top part of your mat. So if you flip it back and forth, the top part of your mat isn't always the top part of your mat. That way you don't have, you don't wear out your mat as quickly. That one fabric mat, this is a new one, but that other one, it's lasted quite a while. I've been impressed. So, I love Craig. Okay, so, maker, done cut out all my pieces. Here's my stack. So those pieces of material that were just folded in straight lines, <clears throat> now they're all squares and triangles. What did I learn? Three mats. Ideally, because you cut your strips into 12 inch strips and if you have two mats, you can put a 12 inch strip because some of them use two 12 inch strips of approximately 42 inches. So you can load up two mats with your 12 inch strip and send your mat through and then you can send your second mat through but you need to use the leftovers from the first mat on the third mat that you're going to send through. And then you need to use the leftovers from the second mat on the fourth mat that you send through. So on those cuts that were two-thirds of a yard, 
you ultimately cut out that material on four different mats. So ideally to keep up three mats work the best. Make sure your rotary blade is sharp. I ended up going out and getting a, the rotary blade replacement because my rotary blade I had been used before and it wasn't <clears throat> excuse me it wasn't really sharp. Once I got that new sharp rotary blade, I didn't have pieces of material that were stuck together and you know you had to cut it with scissors and because that slows you down. Make sure you pay attention to which mat you're on when your internet goes out. I'm not 100% sure these are cut correctly. So I may be doing some makeup cutting. And that was about it. The three hours for the project, I don't think includes cutting out your material. Not that that's a big deal. It would have taken me way longer to cut this stack of material by myself, not using my Cricut Maker. And I could do other things in between. So, all right, so that is episode two of Let's Make a Quilt with our Cricut Maker. And the next time you see me on episode three, we'll be piecing that big boy together. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like watching my crafting videos, then please subscribe and click the bell so that you're notified when I upload a new video. Share with everybody. And I know that you have lots and lots of choices when you log into YouTube, and I really appreciate you watching my video. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.